Hey community, in today's podcast episode, Matt McCoy sits down with Pastor Dave Davis. Dave has been a senior pastor for a long time, and we wanted to hear from him tips that he had for worship leaders and worship pastors when interacting with their senior pastor. It's such an important relationship, and it can oftentimes be strained or get overlooked, and he shared some super encouraging tips for how to culminate a good relationship with your senior pastor and how to serve them well. We hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to Loop Live. My name is Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com, and I'm the host of the Loop Live show. And today, we have a very special guest, Dave Davis. He's a very good friend of mine. He actually officiated the wedding of my wife and I a couple years, uh, six years ago. And so, uh, but we go way back. Dave has been a pastor for 30 years, and he's now coaching leaders, pastors, and nonprofits through the Ashland Group. And I'm really excited to talk to Dave from a senior pastor's perspective about worship and worship leaders and the relationship between the two and all sorts of things. I think this is going to be a really interesting conversation. And so um, if you guys have any questions, wherever you're watching from right now, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, write down in the comment box down below, write down what question you have for Dave from a senior pastor's perspective, all right? And we might take some questions live. We'll see. So type down in the comment box. Also, if you have not done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the share button so that more worship leaders can hear about this show. So without further ado, here is my good friend, Dave Davis. Hello, Dave. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, man. Coming to you from uh, downtown Chicago right now. Excellent. And are you out in the love, suburbs? Love the map of the city in the back, back there. It's looking good. Yep. I'm right yep. about here, I think. Um, nice. Are you out in the suburbs today? Out in the burbs today. Cool. Uh, living the suburban dream, which it is not all the time, but... Yeah. Well, uh, Dave, just give me, just give us a quick, just 75,000 foot view real quick of what your experience is. Like, <laughs> cause I know you're, you're doing a lot of different things and, um, mm. I'd be curious, just give us an idea of what, what's your experience? Yeah. So I started in ministry a long time ago in student ministries, um, in California. And, uh, then I, came to the hallowed halls of the Moody Bible Institute and got a degree. Then I went back into student ministries. Um, and then I went to work for Nike, uh, Nike corporate in Beaverton, uh, and worked there for a number of years outside the world of ministry, but felt uh, really called back into it, which was an, an interesting experience to have the choice of doing something different or coming back. And I chose to come back. Uh, and then I went to a church in Texas, outside of Houston, Texas, where I was. Uh, it was a young church. I became their first like full time student ministries pastor. Then I became the pastor of creative development, so I oversaw communication and worship planning. And then I became their executive pastor. I was there for ten years, uh, and then moved here to Chicago to a church in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, I came as the executive pastor, and then about six or seven years into that. Uh, time, I became the co-lead pastor wow. as a part of a transition process for the senior pastor uh, who had been there for a, re a really long time um, and uh, stayed there for 12 years. And just, just recently uh, this summer, uh, left that to do full-time coaching and development work uh, with churches and not-for-profits. Wow. Yeah. So, and I met you during your uh, Parkview years and- mm -hmm. The way we met is that, and I think, well, you do these coach, you do coaching sessions called life plans, mm -hmm. and you do that through yeah, that's the right. group, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. you took me through exactly. a life plan. It's like basically a two day intensive where you basically just like dump out everything in your life that's happened, and and you kind of just helps. It helps you kind of get recentered on what matters, what's your passion, what's your mission in life, and helps give you some direction of, okay, this is where I'm heading, this is where I'm gonna go. And I know that it was a huge thing for me, a very pivotal mo moment for me. Um, and that's how we met. You did my life plan. We spent two days Yeah, together. that's right. And um, yeah. you know more about me than most people. 
<laughs> yeah, and we've been we've been friends ever since. And uh, you know, you mentioned that I was a part of your wedding, and I've been a part of you and your growing family's life for a long time. And I, I'm grateful that you took a risk on me in those two days, and uh, I'm glad it was uh, beneficial for you. Oh, it was incredible. And I will just pause just to say that if any worship leader is watching this and you've heard about life plans or you're interested in that, I would definitely highly recommend Dave. Uh, go to the Ashland group. We can talk about links and stuff later, but look up Dave and do a life plan with him because it was incredible. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so I, you know, you were, you were pastor at Parkview and I led worship mm -hmm. there a few times. So we've kind of also worked yeah. together in that, like I've, we've worked together in the Sunday morning setting as well, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Like you've been the pastor, I've been the worship leader. And I thought this interview would be really interesting because usually I'm interviewing worship leaders on this show. And this is the first time I've interviewed a senior pastor. And I thought, or a, or a pastor, somebody who's been in a, in a pastor position, I thought this would be such a good way to get just an idea of insight of what a worship, pa what a senior pastor is thinking, you know, about worship and worship. Like, what are some things that worship leaders need to know from a senior pastor's perspective? And one of my questions, uh, the first question I think we should start with is what should worship leaders know about the senior pastor? What is it about the senior pastor that worship leaders don't, maybe don't know, maybe don't realize? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, I've worked with a lot of worship leaders over the years. Um, I would say some I led well, some I maybe didn't lead as well. And I think what, what I would want a worship leader to know about the senior pastor or the lead pastor is they also have that seven seven uh every seven day churn of trying to create something uh and they have to go into a dark space and a quiet space and write something um about god's word that is fresh and relevant and they have to do that every seven days as well and so i i think i would want a worship leader to know that we also have uh that mm -hmm. creative process and there's a churn to that and there's an exhaustion to that and there's a um you know, uh, is this fresh and does this, is this going to hit anyone in a way that's going to make a difference in their life? So that's a piece of it that I think is important. We're similar in that way. And I think sometimes uh, worship leaders maybe don't see pastors in that way. They think that uh, what, a, what a lead pastor has to do or a teaching pastor has to do um, is different. And it is still a very creative process. Um, it may come from a different side of the brain, but it's still super creative. And I think the th second thing I would want worship leaders to know is we have all the same insecurities and all the same fears and all the same dark motivations as they do. Um, we just, um, we're just not really allowed to express it uh, in a way that um, is public. Um, and that's, I think that's a statement about the church. I think that's a statement about where the church is today. I don't think it's a good one. Um, I think that the more vulnerable a worship leader can be and the more vulnerable a pastor can be, uh, I think uh, makes a better church, makes a better congregant, and also I think is much more life-giving and experience for the leader. Um, so I guess I would, I guess those are the two things I'd want you to know is that we also have that same creative churn mm. and uh, we also have some of the same um, fears and, and anxieties and tensions around, uh, around it around being a leader. Um, and I would say that's really particularly true in this last two year window of time where uh, senior pastors that I talk to all over the country are like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to see the future. I don't know what's next. Uh, I don't know who goes to my church. Uh, and, and there's, so there's a lot of like everything that we held on to that we can measure good or bad, um, is up in the air today. And, um, it's, a, it's a different day. So those yeah. would be a couple of things I would say. I will say that, like, I don't think right now I would want to be a pastor of a church because I think yeah. that these past two years, I can't even imagine how difficult it's been for senior pastors to juggle, you know, trying yeah. to keep everybody happy. You know, people, no masks, yes masks. or I mean, you know, you can't make everybody happy. And it's just like, it would just be a total disaster. And a lot of churches, it seems like, are having to start over. Like, they lost, like, 40, 50% of their congregation. And some, mm -hmm. what I've heard is some of these people have just never come back. And it's like, yeah, that's right. You're basically replanting a church all over again. Mm -hmm. in, in a different way, with different different metrics, with a different motivation, um, but with greater with a greater sense of burden because 
a church plant, you, you, you know, you, you, you now maybe have a giant building or you have a building or you have staff and you have to repurpose all of those things in this new day. And, um, and uh, you know, one of the things that I've been talking about with leaders is just getting rid of all pre COVID metrics and just starting with a clean slate. Mm. Like, let's not compare those numbers to where we are today. Those yeah. were back in the day and that's a different day. Yeah. Uh, and let's start fresh and reimagine. It's and, like um, AD and BC. Now it's just like pre-COVID. Yeah. <laughs> right. After COVID. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's super scary. I mean, I, I want to acknowledge that that's a very scary. On top of that, you have this shifting dynamic in the context of church, right? I mean, this post-evangelical -evangel sort of structure of church is also a very real and growing um, understanding of church, expression of church. So, Yeah, that's it's good to hear. Um you know, that we're similar in that same insecurities. And I think, if anything, too, senior pastors are carrying a much heavier load, too, because maybe not just, you're not just working on an, a sermon, but you're having to also deal with <laughs> people and organizational issues and staff issues and all sorts of things. But I think also mm -hmm. even like the, you mentioned the dark motives. And I think every worship leader listening to this knows what that means. Because I think we all internally struggle with these like insecurities of like, you know, it's 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 hard to be on stage in front of a bunch of people and feeling like you have to perform and you almost feel like you need like their attention or you need their um, applause, you know. And I think mm -hmm. that it's kind of good to know that we're in the same boat in that. Like, it's a struggle. It's yeah. hard to like hold those two things. And um, also yeah, the writing. It, it really is. Yeah. The writing a sermon thing is interesting because worship leaders, I think, have it easy in that we're just we're just playing songs that have already been written. <laughs> It'd be like if you mm -hmm. had, you could just re-preach sermons that you preached a year ago, uh, where you're having to write yeah. original content every single seven days. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, but I think also the worship leader has a unique set of pressures in that um, no one really is going to no one on staff or in leadership is necessarily going to critique a, a legitimately crafted message. Um, you're just going to get emails from people and who are going to say, I didn't like that or I didn't like this, which a worship leader would get. But a worship leader also has this added pressure of trying to please a senior pastor or uh, adhere to a vision or uh, you have to also have critiques from within the staff or other people that are in leadership within the church. So um, it's a little different in that. And, and it's a you know, I have also been around uh, senior pastors who have been highly with a high feedback culture, who have been very critical at times of their worship leader, and I can't imagine what that is actually like. I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily have that experience. So maybe on some degree, it's a little harder for a senior pastor. But I also think there's a different level of critique placed on a worship leader that maybe the lead pastor doesn't experience. Yeah. Man, that's a really that's a really good perspective. That there are more similarities than differences. Because I think sometimes we can think that it's two. Okay, we're in two totally different camps. We're just both on Sunday morning stage. But it, there are a lot of similarities there. And I've actually never thought about that. Mm -hmm. What What do you think should the relationship look like between the senior pastor and the worship leader? Like, what should look, what should that look like? Do they? Because every church does this differently. Do you think they need to communicate a lot? Like, should the worship leader be reporting to the senior pastor? Or is that not even necessary? Yeah, in terms of reporting, relationship and reporting structure to me are two different dynamics. Um, how the reporting structure works is less important to me. Um, more the relationship is, I think, really important. I think the triangle between a lead pastor, an executive pastor, if there is one, and a worship pastor or leader, um, that's really a very important relationship and one that should be cultivated and developed. If you don't like hanging out with your lead pastor or your lead pastor doesn't like hanging out with you, that's a problem. Yeah. And one that you should look at and honestly evaluate. I'm not saying that there has to be a family kind of relationship or we hang out every Friday or every Saturday or whatever. But I'm saying if you can't get together and just be together um, and talk about things that are church related and maybe even things that are not church related, if that's not working, then I would definitely focus on that because there has to be a sort of a symbiotic experience between those two people. 
And, and then if there is an executive pastor, I would say that's the third part of that triangle. Those three relationships have to be pretty tight. And, and I would say every time where I felt like I wasn't leading a worship person well, um, the relationship piece of it fell apart first. So interesting. And what is the first thing you would do if you noticed that there was a deterioration in that relationship? Yeah, I, I think I would lean in and try to find out why. And I pause because, again, I don't know that I've done this perfectly o- over the years. Um, and I've made a lot of mistakes in this particular area. But I think I would want to, I would really want to get to the core of whatever the distance or the tension or the friction is. I would want to find out where that wound was. I would want to have a clearing conversation where, um, where, we, where we cleared that up and we talked about it. I think the hard part is that in this work, we have this, you're either for me or you're against me mindset. And I think there is a middle ground to that. Um, that on any given day, there's a flex in that relationship um, where it may feel like I'm not for you. But that's because I'm for the 200 other things that are happening within the within the body of believers that have gathered. And there may be times where I feel where you where the worship leader may feel like their lead pastor is 100% for them and they should realize that that's coming potentially at the cost of being for other things that are around them. Um, so, you know, to go back to what you said earlier, there are just on the lead pastor's plate are a lot of different expectations and things they have to keep their minds on. Sometimes it's not always the ministry happening around worship. Um but the relationship should be tight so that what is happening on stage um, feels real. It is real and, and is genuine. Wow. That is really interesting. I, when I think back to all the you know, churches I've been on staff at, it has been so much more life giving for me as a worship leader when I've had a relationship with the senior pastor and not just like a working relationship where we just sit and talk about, you know, the, the upcoming weekend, but where I really mm-hmm. felt known and also where I knew, like they also, like I also knew them, like like a relationship where you actually know someone and you care about someone. And even just a couple of days ago, it's interesting. It's, I think it's just interesting how much having understanding and compassion for other people and knowing their story, knowing their family, like that can um, end up covering a lot of wounds mm-hmm. when you just have, this like sympathy and empathy for someone because you know them and yeah. you don't have to like someone like liking someone and know, and loving someone is very different. And like Jesus says, like, love your neighbor. Uh, you may not have to like, like them, but when you love, but when you start loving them though, as a person, as knowing, knowing who they are, the liking comes from that. It really does. Like, but if you start with like loving them as a person, it's amazing how it changes everything. The like, yeah, comes totally. From that. Yeah, that's right, and that that's that's an internal process, right? You know, to your question of what, where would you start if there was, you know, a disconnect in that relationship? I think I would I would start with me. And I would try to figure out what is that wound, what is that hurt that I'm experiencing, yeah. and then I, I think I would try to find that out in the other person as yeah. well. Um, it, yeah, it's really really uh, important. So here's an interesting question that I've, that I w- I've always wanted to know from a worship leader's perspective. So what is one pet peeve, if any? This is such a weird question to ask. What's one pet peeve, if, if any, that you think pastors typically have of worship leaders? Like, give us the inside scoop. Uh, wearing jackets inside. <laughs> Oh, I don't man. understand. I don't understand why there's a leather jacket uh, in June inside. I don't under. I don't fully understand that. That is so funny, and like a beanie, and <laughs> oh my gosh! So, I did not expect that at all. That is so funny. <laughs> you know, I don't really have a worship leader pet peeve. I know a lot of pastors who say who would say to their worship leader, uh, "Play more, talk less." Right? Yeah. Maybe maybe you've heard that over the years. Yeah. I don't have that. I don't have that as a pet peeve. I, I'd much rather if, if what is coming out of that worship leader in a spoken word 
is as Holy Spirit infused, that's what's coming out as a musical word, I'm quite comfortable cutting pieces of what I'm about to say uh, in order to uh, in order to uh, make the service fit in whatever time frame it needs to fit in. Um, but just the same advice I would give to a lead pastor, I would give to a worship pastor, which is if you're going to speak, make sure that what you say is has value and meaning and is answering the most relevant questions that are happening in the room. Um, pastors do this all the time. They they yeah. diesel through and they talk, uh, you know, particularly in that vision slot or that welcome slot where, you know, we're just, we're just spewing out words and hopefully something sticks. No, it, the words need to be meaningful and impactful um, and thoughtful. That's, you know, very, that's, that's the that's thing. So interesting. I mean, you, you, I've always liked that about you when you've led worship, you, you bring out your phone, you have some thoughts down sometimes on your, on your phone, or you have yeah. the scripture ready on your phone and you're, you know, you've thought about it, you've prepared. Um, I, I also think that, and this is, I think this is actually more an imperative of the worship leader than even the, the lead pastor. Cause the lead pastor doesn't, it's not, at least in most denominations doesn't have a lot of wiggle room on what he or she is going to say in the moment, but you do. Um, and so I think if I were to say here, a pet peeve of mine, it would be, um, is, is not, is not staying emotionally and spiritually connected in the moment in the room. Hmm. Um, answering the, the relevant question that's in the room is a sensing what that is, is a big part of worship leading from my perspective. Um, you got to know, you got to know the room, you got to know where it's going. Um, and, and you gotta, you gotta take it somewhere. Um, and, and it, and it shouldn't be take it to the 10 yard line. So the pastor can push it through the end zone, uh, which I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that phrase. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't be that there should be a spiritual journey, um, a worship journey, uh, of which the sermon is just a part of. Wow. Yeah, that's good. And it really takes intentionality. Because I do know mm-hmm. what you're saying, where sometimes it feels like you can get up there and lead worship and you're like, oh, I just feel like saying something. And maybe you have like one thought, but you, you never like had even like premeditated on any of it. And sometimes it can, can kind of be like you're just up there rambling. And mm-hmm. I do think that you have to be really intentional about, about what you're going to say there, that it is bringing meaning and guiding people on this worship journey. One of the pastors I used to work with used to say that the uh, like the worship was like the, the the preaching is like the final song in the set in a way that the worship should be like leading mm-hmm. right up to like bam like the 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 sermon's the final final song in the set um yeah no i think that's really good meaning yeah that's a really that's a really good way to phrase it actually i i, I believe that yeah yeah where they're where they're kind of linked together as one there's not mm-hmm. a disconnect um, yeah that's right what is what is one or a few things that a worship pastor could do to really love and serve their senior pastor? Because I know that some worship pastors feel that disconnect between the senior pastor. Like maybe they only see them on Sunday morning, like they roll in and check their mic. And what's something that a senior pastor like needs that would be really like the senior pastor would be like, wow, that was really kind and loving. Mm. Like what's something a worship pastor could do that to really love their senior pastor? Yeah, stay in a really healthy feedback loop. Um, mm. Work intentionally. Work hard to keep that feedback loop um, healthy. And I use the word loop because it's a two-way street, right? The worship leader should have all the freedom in the world to communicate some feedback in a respectful and mindful way, thoughtful way, back to the the teaching pastor or the lead pastor, or whoever is in that role for that particular Sunday. There should be that feedback. Um, and there should be that that dialogue around, hey, that that word. Let me tell you how that word may have hit a different generation. Or let me let me tell you how that thought process um, struck me uh, today. Um, I, I think there's a. I think it's essential that there be. If you have multiple services, that there be an opportunity for that after the first service, so that things can be corrected for yeah. the the services to come. But even if it's just a singular service, I think. a a time during the week where that is possible. And if you're able to give that, then I think it's easier for you to receive the feedback from the lead pastor as well. So I think, I think like going to the senior pastor and being like, Hey, what'd you think about worship this weekend? Anything we need to change? Anything we need to tweak? Yes. Yes. Uh, Yeah, exactly. 
uh, and I, I think if, if it can be done after the first service, before the next service, it's great. But if, if it needs to happen during the week, it should happen. And that worship leader should feel the freedom to also um, to, to pass that on to their, their lead pastor as well, the, the feedback on the sermon or feedback on that piece of, of, of that person's piece of the service. Um, I think that's really, really important. And as a, as a lead pastor, a former lead pastor, uh, I, would, I welcome that. I would want that. Uh, I have asked for that in the in the past, um, and uh, but it's imperative that it's done in a healthy way. Um, too often, yeah. it can be done in a way that uh, feels punitive or demeaning or shame shame based. You know, so that I think that's one thing. Um, I think I think another thing is to uh, is to not forget about uh, the lead pastor. Right, there are um, moments in which you know the band has done their rehearsal sound check is over and then everyone just sort of vacates the stage and the lead pastor is there going, am I, am I supposed to test something now? Is uh, you know, is there anyone here that wants to connect with me or, you know, make sure I'm okay. Uh, so, so make sure that the lead pastor feels included in the team yeah. instead of just a, uh, an outsider to the, to that mix. That's a great tip. That's a really great tip because I can totally see how that could happen. Like the, the band, I've been there for sure when that's happened. When the band is like, <laughs> is done the sound check, and then we like peace out and go eat breakfast in the green room, and the senior pastor is right. like all alone. And I could totally yeah, see it, it could be as right. easy as the worship. It could be as easy as the worship leader just being like in the mic, you know, in front of in the whole room with the band, be like, hey, you guys, all right, we're done with the band sound check. And then just communicating right to the senior pastor, be like, hey, Dave, so now's your your chance let's go ahead and check your mic and make sure you're set up for success and yeah you know, just a and do you need anything from us like is there yeah. anything from uh, the team's perspective that you might need for us right like yeah you know the opportunity to say i'm a, I'm a little nervous about this thing i'm gonna say you know yeah. halfway through or i'd really like some musical reinforcement at this point at the end and you know yeah. a lot of pastors put that in their notes but sometimes pastors are fearful to actually make a request of the team in that way, especially in the moment, because the, the Holy Spirit's still working on a pastor, a teaching pastor, right up until the end of the first time they give that message. Yeah. Um, and so things change. Yeah, that's so good. So really just communication. It's key. Just, mm -hmm. just be communicating. Don't yeah. just do your role and then leave, but like see it as a team effort. What about, yeah. um, what about sermons as far as do you, you know, I know a lot of times worship leaders, it, it means a lot when a worship, when a senior pastor come up to them, comes up to them afterwards and be like, hey, that was a great set, like great job leading mm -hmm. or whatever. I know that means a lot. Does it also mean a lot to you when, if the worship pastor comes to you and be like, hey, that was a really solid sermon or. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and, and even going a step further to say, this is where it connected with me. Mm, you know, yeah. I mean, authentically, it has to be, it has to feel, be authentic, but, but yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's funny even asking that question. It just seems like an obvious answer. Like, of course, we should be encouraging one another. Uh, but I think it can be forgotten. There's a, there, yeah, there's a comfortability, actually, that sets in in that relationship because you're doing the basically the same thing over and over again every seven yeah. days. There, This, like, normalcy creeps in, just like in a marriage, actually, where you, yeah. you forget, you know, that it's, you know, yeah. it's it's really kind to say, I love you, or you look beautiful today, or whatever it is to, to my to my spouse. We get too comfortable in that. It's the same is true for this type of relationship. Do senior pastors notice if the band or the worship leader don't ever sit in on the service and actually listen to the sermon? Because I know a lot of churches have a culture of the green room thing where the band just goes back in the back, eats breakfast during the service, probably never even heard the sermon at all. Do you see we, pastors we notice, notice that? Oh, for sure, we notice. We know. And do you think it's a but, a problem? Um, you know, a lot of green rooms are wired so they can listen. I'm yeah. sure they're intently back there taking notes every time. You know, in the green room. <laughs> yeah. Um, I tell you, I tell you what matters more to at least it would to me. Uh, what matters more not not that you're sitting there listening intently to my message, but that you're out in the lobby or, or patio or whatever it may be greeting people. Mm. Yeah. That's way more important. You got to get out of the green room and touch people, yeah. or or you're a performer. Yeah, and, and that is a game changer. Especially, and it also takes worship leading to another level because uh, when people know you, it they'll follow you. Way 
way better. Like if you expect to be followed when you're leading worship, then I think it's a huge thing to actually then be known. And so you're not just a performer, like you just said. Yeah, wow. and it, and actually, it, there's a lot of forgiveness. Like if, yeah. if if you have an actual kind of eyeball to eyeball relationship with people, they're far there's far much more grace with the occasional I talked too long or the service went long or because yeah. they know you and they know your heart. That's I think that's really I, I think that's true not just of the worship leader. That's true of everyone that's on the platform, whether it's a drummer or a guitar player or a background vocal, whatever it may be, that's really important that people see see them and know them. And that's hard for me because I am I really am an introvert. So it's actually, as a lead pastor, it's hard for me to do that. Yeah. Um, but it makes all the difference in the world. Do you think senior pastors want to be included in like pre-service prayer? Because I know, yes. it, you know, senior pastors have a lot going on. So like they're running around too sometimes, like dealing with a lot of things. And, you know, the band maybe meets before worship and prays before we go out. You know, is that should be something we should be like inviting the senior pastor into? Like, hey, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you said a pastor on a Sunday morning is running around doing a lot of things. They shouldn't be. Hmm. If they're doing that, that's a problem. What they should be doing is in a centering space of of prayer. This open handed moment of like, okay, Spirit, come. Uh, what 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 do I need today? What needs to be cleared out? And a time to pray together with other people um, is is I think a big part of that. So, yeah. Worship leaders should not only request that, but figure out why it's not happening if it isn't happening. Yeah, that's good, Dave. Is there in a, is there a word of encouragement you have for worship leaders at all in this time with COVID? Keep keep doing it. Um, the church the church is changing. I think we can all see that the capital C church in America is changing. Things are yeah. different, and it may feel really insecure. And it may even feel disorienting uh, in this moment. Like, is this really the thing? But listen, what are we called to do as a church? We're called to expose the word of God to other people and to worship God. So whatever the church becomes, um, just keep doing what you're doing and be as healthy a version of you as you possibly can. Mm. We don't, the church doesn't need any more unhealthy church leaders. Yeah. We need people who take their own personal, um, emotional care very seriously, um, because this work is really, really hard. Um, so that would that would be two words of encouragement: keep doing what you're doing. Don't give up on. I don't know what. I don't know what's next. Don't don't let that cause you to give up. And and please stay stay healthy, um, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Stay stay healthy. Um, your relationships are dependent upon it. That's so good, man. Well, there, there's been a lot of good little nuggets in this uh, for worship leaders. So I think it's helpful to know, like, what what are senior pastors thinking and what, what can help? Because I do think that we're one team. And sometimes it seems like there can be a wall or a divide, like it's two different teams, but it's mm -hmm. not. It's, it's one team. And, it's not. And I don't know if it's like the whole boss dynamic. Maybe people, worship leaders, feel like the senior pastors are boss and they could get fired. I don't know what it is, but I feel like there sometimes can be a wall there, and I think it's important to break that down somehow. I think so too. I also think there's a, sometimes there's not a. Um, there are some senior pastors who would consider themselves creatives, um, but I, so I also think it's the right brain, left brain hmm. challenge of um, a non-creative trying to communicate with a creative, and vice versa. I think that creates a, a kind of a, a weird barrier as well at times and and what we do is we just sort of ignore it and pretend it's not really there instead of pushing through and learning how to best communicate in, in an empathetic way with each other um and I, that's the thing i i think i do i feel like i want to also just say i if you've been a worship leader and you have been um hurt by a lead pastor i can't apologize for them but i can empathize with um, the challenge that that is. I know that happens. I know it happens a lot. Um, I would. I have been a part of that. I mean, I, there. I'm sure there are worship leaders throughout my career who I have hurt, uh, and it really in a non-knowing way. But I'm sorry, and I. I hope that you find the help and the healing that you need uh, to work through that and not let that sink too hard uh, into your soul. Yeah, that's good, Dave. Where can uh, people get in touch with you? Yeah, you can uh, reach me at. Uh, the Ashland Group, so it's ashlandgroup.cc, uh, or you can just dave.davis at ashlandgroup.cc. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, 
Dave, I appreciate it. I have been very, very thankful for your relationship in my life. And you and your wife have had a huge impact mm -hmm. on my wife and I. And uh, mm -hmm. my wife loves your wife so much. And yeah. uh, we just really appreciate you guys. And thank you for taking the time to kind of pour into worship leaders and mm -hmm. your coaching that you're doing with leaders. I highly recommend any worship leader to check out Ashton Group if you want to kind of uh, get some personal coaching and get yeah. some directions. So. Oh, thank you. You Thanks, mean a lot to me too, and I'm grateful for you being a champion for worship leaders all around the world. And uh, I, I love you and Mary and your kids. I, I, I just I think you guys are fantastic. So thanks for giving me an opportunity to chat. This has been a lot of fun. Totally. I'll see you soon, Dave. Thanks. All right. Bye bye. bye. All right. Great conversation with Dave. What I want you to do is, if you're watching this, Facebook, YouTube, podcast, whatever, write down in the comments down below what's one thing that you really learned in this interview? What's one thing that really stood out to you uh, that maybe you hadn't thought of before from a senior pastor's perspective? I think that's a really interesting interview because we've never done anything like that um, where we've actually, we talk to a lot of worship leaders. We don't talk to many senior pastors. And um, I think it's important to, you know, make sure that that relationship is uh, solid, that there is communication happening, that you're, you're getting to know each other, that you're seeing yourselves as on the same team and not in competition or anything weird like that. And so uh, some really great tips there. Um, and I got my question answered too about uh, green rooms. I thought that was, that's an interesting one as well. So anyways, write down what you thought was interesting. Check out Dave Davis uh, at the Ashen Group. All right, we'll have the link in the bio here. And until next time, have a great weekend leading your church and worship. We'll see you at the next Loop Live. Hey guys, this is Matt McCoy. Thanks so much for tuning into today's podcast. We're trying to provide content that's really helpful and meaningful to you as a worship leader. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay tuned for more from the community.